Hey, you ever been to Chancellor Park? That's where I live. My name is Tavin Dillard, and I live in a trailer park called Chancellor Park, and I mow lawns. I'd like to introduce you to my town. I've been making YouTube's videos since about 2006, and then I've transitioned over to other platforms like the TikToks and the whatnot. But here on this podcast, I'd like to clue you into what's going on with me here lately. And this is like a pre-introduction. Now I'm going to send it off to myself for the real introduction. I'm glad you joined me. Bink, bink. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tap and Dillard Podcast. This is uh, Season 1, <clears throat> Episode 4. My name's Tap and Dillard. I'm Olans. I live in Chancellor Park. It's a podcast. Uh, that's like a radio show, best I can tell, like... Uh, you know, you listen to it with your ears. Where are you at? I don't know where you at today, but I, I hope hope your day's off to a good start. Or if you at the end of your day, I hope it's off to a good finish. You know, like Getaway. But this is uh, the fourth episode of the first season, and so far so good. I get you know I'm getting more feedback. Folks is getting back to me. They say, "Hey, I seen your podcast," or this and that. Uh, one thing that came up more than once is. Uh, folks said, hey, you could you could slow down a little bit. You know, you ain't got to go so fast. I guess I got so used to uh, trying to bring it in under a minute on the TikTok. And I got a little more time on the TikTok now if I want it. Uh, but I don't know. Sometimes it seems there's one minute stories work. But the podcast is, hey, well, I ain't going to be able to pack that in, you know, like out of way in just a short amount of time. So let's let's bring it out a little longer. And that's what I'm doing here. And so I guess I don't. You know, got got to speak so fast. Uh, sometimes I just get going though. It's hard to stop. You know, it's like downhill on a bike with no coaster brakes. You just like, uh, uh, we gonna stop when we get to the end of that hill, or we hit run into a ditch, or tap on pole, or maybe have to lay this thing down. You know, and uh, you trade a little paint. You know, with a stop sign or a, a, a the gravel. I mean, I ain't trading. Yeah, I ain't trading paint so much as a pair of my jeans against that asphalt if you're doing that but anyways that ain't your problem we at episode four now and i want to thank my sponsor wag bar uh if you ain't tried them yet i hope you do just go to my website tabandilla.com you'll see a link right there on the front try the wag bar click on that and it'll take you to everything they got it's a premium wagyu beef that's good beef y'all guys and i ain't just saying it because i you know like i'm a meat scientist i ate it and it tastes delicious i really like it uh they uh like beef jerky but it's it's better than beef jerky it's thick it's soft. Uh, they got uh, 90 calories in the whole thing, and then you know, 14 gram of protein and three grams of carbs, and all kind of flavor. Hot, spicy, teriyaki, peppered, regular, wag bar. Check them out. Go to tabandiller.com. Click on that link, and it'll take you to them. Thanks to them for sponsoring the episode. And before I jump into Game Three that just happened this past week of softball, I had to tell you. Uh, how we could have lost another player on our team just a few days ago. Could have. Now, if you've been listening, you know that we was down one and a half players last week. And now you're probably thinking, how could that be one and a half players, Tavin? Well, I'll let you know. But here's what happened. Myron Curtis, he got benched for not picking up our uniforms for the second week in a row. So he had to sit the bench, but he still had to be chest naked like the rest of us because none of us had uniforms. And we was like, well, you got to stay here with us. You can cheer us on, but you ain't playing tonight. I mean, you two weeks uh, straight now, you know, he told us, uh, I get the uniforms, and he never did. So that was last week kind of thing. And uh, we were skins for two weeks in a row. Now, that's fine for, you know, some front yard football when you in elementary school. But older than that, you know, we, and we we, ail, we way older than that. So it just is insult to injury. And speaking of that, to add insult to injury after the game, when we was done playing and trying to get to the bottom of the uniform circus, Myron informs us last week that there ain't no uniforms to pick up. Did you hear that right? They ain't even there, is what Myron told us. He goes, they ain't even at the store. We was thinking they was in the store the whole time. that we, They'd been ordered, and they just waiting in a box for pickup. Turns out Myron, he can't focus on much more than a couple things at a time. And between his new girlfriend, the town's birthday party for a 107-year-old turtle, and softball season launching, he dropped the ball on the uniforms. So why ain't the uniforms for softball season at the store? Because after last game, he was saying, you can't pick them up because he never ordered them. You heard it right. We two weeks into softball season, and we ain't waiting for an order to get picked up. We waiting for an order to be placed. Well, I was hot. Myron handed over that cash for the uniforms after the game out of his little fanny pack, you know, thing. His head's in the clouds ever since he started dating Mary Beth Tucker. I think that's part of it. And then, 
just you got to be able to steady focus if you're leaving, leading a team. Or And I don't know that he's the leader, but he got that ball rolling. Him and Mark Dwydell, they're the ones who, like, initiated them sign-ups, you know. It's like, hey, we got to get the team together. But uh, I think he's about to run that leadership role as far as he can go, and so a couple of us are taking it over a little bit now. Lots of teams in this league, they got sponsors. Lonnie Brunwell's team was Brunwell's Tires, and sponsored by his daddy's shop, Brunwell's Tires. Team Sonic, well, they sponsored by Sonic. And last week, we got beat by Guthrie's Hunting Supply. Now, we didn't have no sponsor, so Myron said he was just going to pick out some generic green uniforms. That's what he'd been telling us, and that'll be that. Like, we're just going to be a green team. We're not like, fine, you know, whatever, just so we can be a team. It'll look like we own the same team with the same uniforms because when we chest naked, they don't look like the same uniforms. We all built a little different. So here we are. We had a week to figure this out, and at the end of the last podcast episode, a podcast that's like a radio show, I was thinking, you know, I'm a sponsor and all that, and then I thought, well, you know, we need we need uh, we need a local sponsor here in town for our team, and, and where 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 do I like to go locally? You know, that's a business and a place that I would you know be happy to work with, kind of thing. And of course, my mind went right to the burger shed. And Bud's Burger Shed in town, I spent a lot of time there. I spent a lot of time with a number three combo meal, bacon double cheeseburger, uh, Dr. Pepper, and fries or curly fries, your choice. The price don't change. And so, and you know how it is. Sometimes you get a bag of fries and then you just get one of them uh, stray curly fries at the bottom like a, like a bonus or vice versa. You get some regular fries and your curly fries. But anyhow, I thought, you know, light bulb kind of went off in my head. Like, why, why don't I just go down there and ask a... You know, Bud about sponsoring the team. I mean, that's how it went. I ran it by Russell Tucker, Mort Dwight O, and said, how about I ask Bud, you know, to do that? And that, that we got an envelope full of money, and we all tired of being chest naked. Math seemed to add up. I mean, I ain't no mathologist, but I tell you, we all thought that sounded right. So I headed over to Bud's to talk to him about, uh, you know, sponsoring the team. Here's a few things about Bud, though. He a good business man. As a small business owner myself running my lawn care service, I know a little bit about business, and Bud... He can run that thing. Now, he's a little old school, so if you think he can door dash you a number three combo meal, that ain't going to happen. But come on in and slide into a booth, go through the drive through or send your little brother in on his bike to pick it up, and he'll, he'll get you the hot and ready food. he make a great burger. And his new onion ring recipe finally solved them woes. That last recipe he was trying to, to use was not working. I mean, them rings, they'd crack like mud on the hood of a Chevy S10 with a lift kit, and once you bite into it, that breading, you know, it crack and falled everywhere, and you try to bite into that onion, and now it's getting pulled out, and it's slimy like an alligator gar in an irrigation ditch. It did not work, but he switched up that recipe. Anyways, all that to say, Bud don't like change, but he has tried new stuff, and it's worked out. So it's closer to 2 p.m. That's when I go into the burger shed. I took a late lunch because I knew I wanted to chat sponsorship with him, and I wanted him to be able to, like, sit and talk because Bud don't sit during the lunch rush. He'll stand at your table, and he'd talk, and, you know, his head's kind of on a swivel, making sure everything's running okay, but he don't just sit while it's, it's that busy. So he sit across from me at the burger shed, you know, after the lunch rush, and I told him I want to talk to you about the burger shed sponsoring a softball team. And he just kind of look at me, and uh, he was like, well, well, tell me more, you know. He, I was like, well, here's the deal. We got a team. We ain't got no uniforms. Uh, we ain't got no sponsor. Now, we play in, like, Team Sonic. We play in Guthrie's Hunting Supply, uh, uh, Brunwell's Tires. I'm naming all these places. I was like, you see, you see, like, the cause and effect here. They sponsored the team, and then they got the uniforms from that sponsor, and we ain't got nothing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've given you plenty of good business over the years and maybe a good thing for the community if your name's out there a little more, you know, especially if uh, if we win. And now, I didn't think, you know, as I'm rattling off my, like, you know, little sales pitch, uh, I, I ended it with especially if we win, and I shouldn't have said that. If you know anything about our season yet, you can go back and listen to the first uh, few episodes here. But uh, we ain't we ain't so good there. But but Bud asked me two questions back to back when I got kind of done with my spiel, as, as so to speak. And he said, "What exactly do you want from me, Tabin?" And then I'm about to answer that question. And he says, "Is your team any good?" So I kind of like, you know, not. I'm glad you asked, bud. We had, we had two games. We played chess naked. I can show you the road rash from stealing bases head first these last two weeks. And he quickly declined that offer, and I, and I said, but we got a lot of heart, or I mean a pretty good amount of heart, and that may, uh, a lot may be an overstatement. 
And he looked at me, and he's like, so you stink. And I was like, bud, now hear me out. We was down one and a half players last week, firstly. And that piqued his interest anyway, because he's thinking about half a person. And I know I mentioned here at the beginning we was down that many players, and I want to explain to those of y'all listening at home on a jog or on an airplane or at the grocery store or at the ribbon cutting for a new meat market in town, wherever you at, that Myron Curtis was benched. We done been over that. It's been well documented. The half was Brody Childress. And this is what I was trying to tell Bud. You know how when you have a group or a team, and even if you got to pay to be a part of that, there's always that guy who's on his own schedule. Y'all are looking at this it's like a serious commitment. It's on your schedule. You got a softball game. You're going to do it. You even look forward to it during the week. You show up early. You own the team. It's fun. You're looking forward to it. Then there's Brody Childress's of the world who don't always bother to call. But a week later, they say, oh, my wife made her famous three bean salad last night, and I just stayed home to eat it. It's better fresh. I didn't make it to the game. I'm thinking, ain't half a three bean salad vinegar, which means them beans should keep for about 50 years, but that's the kind of things you say. Or maybe something came up, like last week Brody was half a player because he didn't show up till several innings into the game because he had to get a hole patched in the floorboard of his Suzuki sidekick. Now, it ain't a new hole, but he had a toddler lose a shoe at the bottom, and they drove back, couldn't find it. It was a big deal because baby shoes ain't cheap, so was, he's late to the game patching that hole. So that's how he was down one and a half players last week. Bud was leaning forward, and, you know, he's kind of interested like he was thinking, and then he just said, did that children's boy really miss a game for a three-bean salad? And I shook my head, and I said, not this season, Bud, no. And I said, so you want to know what a sponsor's going to do? And he nodded at me, and he said, I think that's clear by now, Tabin. What in the world do you need from me? You know, he's kind of like, you know, ready to move this show on the road kind of thing. I said, Bud, Bud we chest naked. We need uniforms. So firstly, I would say that we need Bud's Burger Shed shirts. And then this would mean our team name would be Bud's Burger Shed. And Bud's like, that's kind of a long name. I was like, well, I didn't name your restaurant, Bud. He nods, okay, you can buy my shirts. Then I slid that envelope of money across the table to Bud, and he said, so, I, well, I said to him, I was like, so do we get, you know, free food or anything like that since we, we Bud's Burger Shed team? He kind of shake his head at me, no, I don't think so. So I nod, you know, fair enough. He did say he'd pass along coupons every now and then. Seemed like a win to me. We got shirts. He even had sizes big enough for Myron and Mort. Russell, he's a big boy too, Russell Tucker, but he over six feet tall. Myron and Mort, they're well under that. The shirts are comfy, and they advertise my favorite place to eat, and I don't have to play chess naked this week. Or should I say, I didn't have to play chess naked this week. That's right. Game number three, and we showed up to the fields officially as Bud's Burger Shed, and we were not chest naked. I repeat, we were not chest naked. I felt like a win already. Myron Curtis has not benched, he wasn't benched no more, so we had him back. Now, Brody, Brody Childers, that's another story. He and his wife had gone out of town to the outlet mall, and they took longer than he thought it would. He told me in the dugout during the third inning when he finally arrived that they had gone to them outlets, and his wife wanted a pair of long pants, you know, them long britches, them two-legged long britches, and they went to Adder Candy and Flanch. Apparently, they sell them britches she wanted there. And Brody told me that when he heard the price of them long britches that his wife wanted at the Adder Candle and Flanch, he said, Tavin, I could buy two gently worn tires for the front end of my Suzuki sidekick for the amount of money they spent on them long pants. I said, you got to be kidding me, Brody. He said, I ain't. And then he said she wanted a handbag, so she wanted to go look at Brasnachi. And she seen them prices, and she was like, we can't do this. I mean, she likes to shop, but she seen them Brasnachi prices and pumped them brakes on that because it was so high dollar. So Brody said, then we was going to go eat somewhere. And I said, did y'all go down to one of, and sit, one of them sit-down places, you know, them fancy ones? He said, well, they weren't, we, we weren't going to do that, you know, for the price of money. Folks was asking. We already bought them, you know, britches at the Adder Candles. So he said he took her to a burrito place called Jabotley. Uh, and then Jabotley, they got the big old burritos, the size of like a full-grown wild rabbit, the ones with the longer haunches. And he said they shared that burrito. He cut it in half with a plastic knife, and they made a whole day and a half at them outlet malls. Sounded like expensive for one of them pair of jeans. I told Brody, I told him, I hope, to, hope them jeans can do laundry and make the bed, change the oil on that sidekick for the price y'all paid. He was like, I wish they did, Tabby, you know. So that's how it is at them outlets, that adder candle and planch. I don't believe I could afford any of that. So, But here we are. Anyway, third inning of our, our, our third game. We 0-2, and, and if you know about the numbers, the O stands for wins, which means we ain't got any, and the 2 stands for losses, I mean, we got two of them. And the good news is, we ain't like one of them high school football teams you hear about that ain't won in three or four years. And even worse, they ain't even scored a point in that amount of time. We have scored first two games we played. We, we pushed some runs across the plate. 
made some good contact, but we just couldn't string enough runs together, you know, while at the same time stopping the other team from having big innings. And, you know, that's that's a recipe for disaster in the softball world, if you know anything about that. So uh, those are two big keys. Like, you got to do both of them to have any success. So here we are by the third ending. I already realized I was dealing with a regular catch-23 with these new shirts because now I got a uniform. And, yes, I ain't got to still base this chest naked and get all ate up by that gravelly infield, but now... I got a nice, comfy, sharp-looking shirt, and I ain't sure I want to get it all dirty. I know it sounds silly. It's like when Meemaw bought a cookie jar and said it was just for looks. We couldn't lift a lid, even. She wouldn't put nothing inside it. She said it was too pretty to use. I mean, I ain't seen nothing like it. It did have two hummingbirds flapping and eight little wings by a bush that's got these flowers on it. I guess hummingbirds like. I don't know what the name of them flowers are. And they buy a clear brook that's just flowing by and a full-grown doe is lapping water from the brook. And in the sky up high is a bald eagle. And then the lid of the cookie jar is painted like the sky with a few little clouds, but mostly just a clear sunny day. So you can see why she wanted it handled with care, but not to be handled at all. Well, now all of a sudden I... I, I know how me mom felt about that cookie jars. I sat in the dugout at the softball fields in my Bud's Burger Shed shirt. And you may be wondering if these shirts would hold up to the rigors of an adult softball league game in the first place. You may be thinking, Tavin, maybe they just a casual shirt. They shouldn't be worn, you know, at the fields anyway because they can't hold up. Well, let me tell you, I can do you one better and tell you how they did hold up to the rigors of Myron Curtis, softball or no softball. Now, the reason I was in the dugout talking with Brody Childers is because we was batting. And if you know anything about softball, you bat one person at a time. You can't send more than one person up there at a time. It just ain't how it works. I mean, you could hit your hit your teammate with the bat. Uh, you could uh, hit the umpire with the bat. You know, two bats swinging away up there. It just, uh, it'd be a mess. You know, I don't want to think about all the details. Just no, don't do it and then leave it at that. Myron stepped in. Uh, he stepped on an aluminum bat. So he's leaving the dugout to head toward the batter's box. And he, he, somebody had their bat just on the ground, and uh, he, he rolled his little angle, you know, kind of thing. He stepped on that thing, and his shoulder slams against the chain link exit gate of the dugout. He loses his foot, and there ain't no catching him. You know, Myron, he big boy, you just got to get out the way, like timber kind of thing. Now, I don't know if Myron was thinking through all the responses to accidents in his head as he has fallen, but he sure enough turned his shoulder so his back took most of the impact, which was a good call. And then he tried to roll out of that fall and pop up like he meant to do it. You know, somebody might stumble over backwards and then they roll backwards and just pop up on their feet. And it looked pretty, you know, fancy like a gymnast or something. Well, he had the will to do that, but he did not have the leg or arm strength to catapult that frame of his to a standing position. I mean, he got partial off the ground, gravity took over, his little feet are moving like them fellers at them stunt shows that run on them spinning logs on the water, and then his hands go out, because that's what hands do when you're about to fall. They just reach out to catch you. Well, he toppled back to the ground. His sweat britches lost a little ground around the waist, and Myron put on a little bit of show, like, kind of like a plumber would underneath your sink. All that to say, his burger shed shirt hit a chain link dugout fence, then the ground about three times with the full weight of Myron behind the impact before he came to a rest on his back like a box turtle that lost its balance trying to climb over a decorative patio brick. It's quite a picture. And that shirt held up. And Myron make it to the batter's box eventually and promptly lays into the softball for a pop fly out. Even after all that, I still not really wanting to mess up his shirt. Something about going two weeks chest naked that made me forget how to be aggressive with a shirt on. I mean, I don't, I, that's the best way I can put it. I don't know the whole psychology behind it, but I was not a terror on the base pass tonight, as I've been known to be. I did still third base on my britches in the fifth inning, just legs first. Didn't feel right since I'm a head first Pete Rose kind of guy. And I got stranded at third base that evening. We're uh, at that inning. Uh, it, well, it was in the evening, but it was the end of the third uh, inning. And there we are, game three. They scored seven runs on us, and we pushed two across total. So quick math will tell you that we's 0 and 3 now. Remember how I said earlier, like the O, the front number, stand for how many you won, and if that number is 0, then that means you ain't won. And then that back end number, that 3, is how many you lost. And at the beginning, you know, of, that, of the game day, it was 2, but by the end of the game day, it was 3s because we's 0 and 3s now. We ain't won a game yet, y'all guys. Now, the score don't tell you the intangibles. Like, did we play with a little more dignity tonight, thanks to not being chest naked? Yes, we did. That was a big deal. And we fielded our whole team from the fourth inning on. That's a beautiful thing. 
So I'm telling you, I, I still say we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, maybe we ain't got it all figured out yet, but we got uniforms and we got a team name, and that's big. We gonna put it together. I mean, don't give up on Bud's Burger Shed yet. Yeah, we 0 and 3, but there's a lot of season ahead. There is a lot of season ahead. So I'm gonna do a little more stretching out this week. I mean, we don't ever practice. Ain't nobody got time for that. But we, I, I, I figure if I stretch out a little bit, it might be just a hair more limber, and that may be all we need to between a W and a an L. And that W stand for win, and that L stand for loss. And the W is what you want. You want to win. You don't want to lose. So it's like that way. So. We'll see how it goes, but i tell you one thing. I appreciate y'all hanging out today and keeping up with the softball season. You know, you listen to a podcast, so you probably know where to find it. So, I mean, you can share it with other folks, though, and leave me a rating on, on the podcast platforms that let you rate it and leave a comment. I know they don't all have that the little little amenity. I also want to thank Wagbar for sponsoring this episode, and I also want to thank Sweet Tea Films. Now, they don't like to like the production company that I operate under, like they, they produce all kind of stuff, not just Tab and Dillard podcast or whatever, you know, we got going on here. And they got a new film out. Now, it's a film that's, that did film festivals. The way I understand it is a film will go to film festivals, like a short film, and then once it's done making that circuit, then you can just make it live on the YouTubes or the interweb, wherever. So this film has done festivals, film festivals around the country, and now it's gonna be it's on YouTube's and it's live now. It's called Jack Township Village, and it's like a six-minute film. They call it a mockumentary. So documentary, you know, they like oh we're going to interview people about this story. This this is a, a story that never happened. But boy, you watch it and you look at them old-timey pictures and you hear the narrator talk and you think, boy, this probably happened. It's called Jack Township Village. It's about a place in Mississippi. This town decades ago that had a terrible peacock attack and just a tragedy in town and how to the town growed from it uh and y'all know i like peacocks i got a shirt that's got a fully mature peacock with a squirrel and a headlock on it but this one uh, uh, is a different thing it's called jack township village anyways when you go to youtube's to sweet tea films uh youtube channel and you watch that video it's probably one of the most recent things they posted on that that, that channel uh, you'll see in the description a link where you can go and rate it on IMDb, and that just gives a, a film a rating. And you know, if you watch that six minutes and you like it, uh, you know, rate it, rate it high if you like it. Anyways, thanks to Sweet Tea Films for helping produce the stuff I'm doing and all kind of other things. So uh, you can check Jack Township Village on YouTube's Sweet Tea Films channel. And you can follow me on all them social media platforms. I'm on TikTok and, and the YouTube's uh, Sweet Tea Films has got my videos there. And then I'm Tabin Dillard on TikTok, Tabin Dillard on Instagrams, Tabin Dillard on Facebook, uh, Tabin Dillard at gmail.com. If you got a, if you got a email to send me, if you are uh, interested in sponsoring a future episode of the podcast, holler at me. And I'm telling you, if you didn't have to spend two weeks chest naked, stealing bases and getting gravel out of you, uh, you doing all right. Thanks for tuning in to the Tavern Dealer Podcast. I'm going to get out of here today. I'll holler at you later. We'll see you.